Welcome to Logic Philosophy 101. In this video, we'll look at the question, what is philosophy? What is logic? Is there truth? Nah, just a little minor topic. And formal truth and material truth. The tradition of philosophy is about 2,500 years old. That is Western philosophy, beginning in ancient Greece with figures like Thales, Pythagoras, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. The picture here that you see is Socrates in the middle, who was the teacher of Plato, who's on the left, and Aristotle, who's on the right. The term philosophy comes from two Greek words, meaning to have a passion for something, that is philos, and wisdom, sophia. A philosopher is literally a person who is in passionate pursuit of a true understanding of themselves and the world around them. Most of the academic disciplines today, such as physics, chemistry, sociology, anthropology, psychology, political science, and many others, were branches of philosophy until a few hundred years ago. It is still the case that the highest degree that you can get in any discipline is PhD. PhD stands for Doctorate in Philosophy. Okay, so philosophy is the quest for wisdom. But how would we know when we found it? Is there such a thing as truth? Can we really tell the difference between opinion and knowledge? What is real and what is an illusion? Is there any way to know for sure? Let's look at an example. Suppose you go into a store and decide to buy something for $5. You take it to the counter, give the checkout person a $20 bill, and they give you back $5. You say, um, excuse me, but I gave you a $20 bill, not a $10 bill. The checkout person says, no, I, you gave me a 10. If you were thinking a minute ago that there is no such thing as truth, or each person has their own definition of truth, you would have no reason to argue, even if you were sure you gave the clerk a $20 bill. If all truths are equal, or each person has their own truth, the checkout person is just as right as you are. No matter how much you want $10 more, there would be no reason you could give that you are right and they are wrong. The checkout person could just say, hey, my version of reality is just as valid as yours, so you're only getting five bucks back. If all truths are equal, you would have no basis to argue. If you were sure you gave them a $20 bill and the item only cost $5, including tax, I think you would agree you should get $15 back, and that's not just a matter of opinion. In fact, if you came into the store the next day and made the same transaction, they would owe you $15. If your cousin made the same transaction, they would owe your cousin $15. They would even owe your aggravating, bad-tempered neighbor $15, even if your neighbor was rude to the clerk. It doesn't matter when, where, or who it is, the conclusion is the same. The clerk owes the person $15. We've discovered something astounding when you look at it. We've discovered absolute truth. 20 minus 5 equals 15, and that's true for all time, anywhere, and for anybody, no matter what your cultural background, what you wish was true, or what you wish was false. But what if you made a mistake? You bought something earlier in the day and forgot. You only had a $10 bill instead of a 20, and you didn't pay attention when you handed the clerk the money. The clerk, being professional and leaving the bill on top of the cash register drawer until you accept the change, has the proof. Here's the $10 bill, not a 20. Is it still true that you should get $15 back? After all, a moment ago I said we had discovered a timeless absolute truth. What's going on? In logic, we'll be making the distinction between formal truth and material truth. The logic of the reasoning is called formal truth, and whether or not the facts are true is called material truth. So the conclusion of the same argument could be formally true but materially false. I gave the clerk $20 for a $5 item, therefore the clerk owes me $15 back. If it is not true that I gave them $20 or that the item costs $5, the conclusion that they owe me $15 is materially false. But it is still formally true that $20 minus $5 equals $15. So what's the point? When we use the term true, we have to be 
pretty clear about what it is we mean because it can mean a number of different things. To help keep the different kinds of truth straight, most of the time logicians refer to arguments being formally valid or invalid and materially true or false. So the conclusion of an argument, or in this case the conclusion of this uh, arithmetic problem, may be formally valid or invalid or materially true or materially false. It could be formally valid and materially false. So for instance, someone might have a perfectly logical argument in terms of it being formally valid, but the facts of the argument might be false, in which case it would be materially false. Formally valid, materially false. On the other hand, it could be that the conclusion that they come to is perfectly true as far as the way the reality really works, the facts of the matter. But if the argument is formally invalid, in other words, if it's not rational, if it's not logical, then that logic doesn't support the conclusion. It is formally invalid, but it happens to be materially true. Through the semester, we'll be looking at the relationship between these two types of truth, that is, uh, formal validity and material truth. This is just a taste, so you get some idea of how we might be approaching logic. We'll also be dealing with what's called informal logic, which will be the topic of another presentation. So to review, philosophy began in Greece over 2,500 years ago with figures like Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Aristotle is going to be particularly important for us because he is the first inventor of formal logic. F philos means having a passion for something, and Sophia means wisdom. So a philosopher is someone who has a passion for wisdom. The search for truth has been a major quest in Western philosophy. Arguments may be formally valid or invalid, and arguments may be materially true or materially false. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.